Hey, what's up, y'all? Kenzo is here with uh, Dead Space 3. I have not played this game since it came out. And on the, the title screen, it said 2013. So what is that? Six years ago, this game came out. And uh, I played through it exactly once. Uh, I remember I liked it, and I had some beef with it. And I'm hoping playing it again will give me a different kind of viewpoint on it. Uh, especially since I'm going into it fresh after going through all the other Dead Space games. Um, so hopefully my memory isn't tainted or I'm, I'm walking into this already prejudiced like, oh, this game's terrible because I don't think it is. I just think it's different than the other ones and I, I just need to deal with that. So let's uh, let's get going here. Oh, that's very animated. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Oh. Oh, stop spinning. Uh, let's do normal. America. It all started 300 years ago with the discovery of the Black Marker, an alien artifact found under the old Gulf of Mexico on Earth. It seemed to hold the promise of limitless energy until it produced dementia, insanity, and a twisted life after death known as necromorphs. The details of the original Black Marker disaster were buried in cover-ups and conspiracies but not before an entire religion could be launched in the name of one of its researchers, Michael Altman. His questionable death turned him into a martyr, and Unitology was born. To this day, it thrives. A secretive organization that believes the Markers are divine, and their plan for us, a glorious unity of mind, body, and spirit. Generations after the Black Marker disaster, mankind found himself going extinct from lack of resources. Desperate, he sought to replicate the Black Marker in an attempt to harness its limitless energies for himself. The records of this era are unclear, but we now know the replication was successful, but the cost too high. The Marker copies were all buried, hidden in secret places across the universe where, to all our benefit, they might have stayed. But 200 years later, during an illegal mining operation on Aegis 7, the planet cracker USG Ishimura unearthed one of the forgotten copies, a red marker, and with it, the start of a new wave of marker infections. A key survivor of that incident was an engineer named Isaac Clark, that marker spoke to him and left him with a gift, a mental blueprint of the marker itself. Isaac was captured and tortured by EarthGov, his mind harvested for the marker's secrets. The marker program was thus restarted, and a new one built on the populous Titan Sprawl. The disaster quickly followed. He managed to escape, but just barely. There was nothing left but dust just like Aegis 7. Since that time, the marker crisis has only deepened, and Isaac Clarke, his marker touch mind still burning with the ability to build or destroy them, stays in hiding, determined to retreat from the markers and all they have wrought. But there is hope. A backwater ice ball of a planet where 200 years ago, someone, somehow, stopped a marker uprising in its tracks. A clue from the past that may save our future. Well, I like the intro. That was neat. I really like the music. Oh. 
Alpha Niner, this is Whiskey 250. Come on. Alpha Niner, this is Whiskey 250. Serrano, do you read me? Tim! Oh, thank God! Did you find it? Find it. Doc, I'm not even sure what we're looking for. Just uh, follow the waypoint I sent you. I, I can't tell you anymore. Just get there. No. Do you hear me? You have to get there. What? Oh, it's lost. What? Dang it! Oh, is this me? Oh, all right. It, it sounds like I'm. Oh, yeah. It sounds like I'm playing a uh, good old boy. Dang it, Doc! I don't even know what I'm looking for. All right, we're going this way. Ooh, what's that? Oh, I don't have my. I don't have any bullets. Do I have anything on me? I have a heavy elite bullpup with no bullets. Okay, Tim, you can do this. Oh, he's dependent on you. You're a soldier, right? <laughs> right. Gun's not even loaded. Going the right way? Oh, yeah. This way. But there's stuff back here, I, I think. Right? You know what? I'm just gonna go. You know, first first chapter of the game. I don't even like it's not Isaac, so clearly I'm not gonna keep this guy. Zombies, I played this.
my god, oh my, oh my god. Go, fella. Go, fella, go. Get it. Oh my god, it's Crash Bandicoot. What do I do? Shoot the missile. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> Buddy, you, you gotta stop opening your helmet, man. It's cold there. You have frostbite. Young soldiers, every one of them. General Mahad, sir. Where's Dr. Serrano? Earl Serrano, always the optimist. Well, he said I should take this into the city. He said there's still time to stop it, sir. There's still time. We lost control. And now, for the love of Earth and the sovereign colonies, we've got to do what's right. Which is. You love the Earth, son. Your mom and dad. You... Yeah, yes, sir, of course. Good. I'm glad to hear that. No, oh, you dick! Okay, I'm gonna end this gameplay. The transitionary scenes in this game are, are interesting because it'll just flow from uh, one chapter to the next. And it was kind of like what happened to me in my Dead Space 2 gameplay towards the end where it's like, I'm just running down the hallway and it's like, oh, by the way, you're in chapter 15. This game's kind of like that. So there's gonna be some instances, I suspect, throughout this gameplay series that I'm gonna do where I'm gonna have to stop like this and just cut it and end it and then start because I I'm I'm being OCD but I want to post each chapter separately of each other. It's the thing. It's the thing that I do. So um so this gameplay is over. It's the prologue anyway, so not very long. So I will see y'all for the next chapter. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.